keynote speaker. We are always waiting for Mr. Paul Iman. Mr. Paul Iman, let me uh, introduce to you Mr. Paul Iman very briefly. I have his long CV, but I will be very brief. Mr. Paul Iman went to the University of California, Berkeley, 1952. He also had one degree from the Training Center for Aerial Survey, the Netherlands, 1958. He did special studies, mining geology in Europe, oh, University of <laughs> Tennessee, 1958. And then he did a Master of Business Administration and Geology from Stanford University, California, 1963. Mr. Ryman, between 1951 and 1994, he has worked in various companies. He has worked for various companies. At this, he has some of the companies I would like to mention very briefly, Asargo, United Nations, the World Bank, Essex International, Chevron Resources Company, Pioneer Corporation, and Mesa Amarillo. At this time, Ms. Ryman is uh, SRAM Chair in Economic Geology, University of Nebraska. He's a visiting professor over there, University of Nebraska Lincoln. Ms. Ryman is also a visiting faculty for uh, the New Mexico Day. New Mexico Day. Ms. Ryman is our president, Panhandle International Business Forum. Ms. Ryman is also president, Commonwealth International Incorporated and managing principal, Minerals Evaluation Network. I would also like to mention that Ms. Ryman has won, done a lot of work, wonderful work for the Panhandle, especially in international business and trade. Please welcome Ms. Ryan. Dr. Tarek, inducted members of Phi Beta Delta, the established members, and guests. I'm overwhelmed by my audience. I, I think I have to write a new talk, but I don't have time to do that. It's inspiring to realize the academic achievements by both students and faculty from all over the world here at West Texas University. My hero is Don Quixote. One of my heroes is Don Quixote de la Mancha. I love people who tackle impossible tasks. And one of the impossible tasks I, and I encourage your help in it, is to bring the panhandle of Texas into the international world. Much of the leadership of the panhandle of Texas is not aware of what's going to happen in the next six years and in the next century as Amarillo and the panhandle of Texas becomes totally global and international in all that they do. I'm giving you part of the responsibility to educate and inspire the leaders of the panel handle of Texas to realize how important it is for this entire area to understand how international this area will become. Tonight, you're going to have a freewheeling look and becoming involved internationally in your chosen field or an area that interests you in an increasingly global world. We're going to take a look at the range of opportunities open to us internationally today. How to start, where to get information, the importance of language and customs, getting involved, particularly particular growth areas, using your own talents, some practical tips and experiences, and finding needs to fill. Assuming you've all completed your income tax, <laughs> let's now look at some of these details. The range of opportunities open to us internationally today, and I refer to the one ads in the London Economist. And these are examples of how people need you. They need me. And it doesn't hurt to 
read the Warren ads once in a while to know what are our future opportunities. I'm going to use a little different words. This, in my mind, is an ad for a truck driver with a degree in economics who learned some language at West Texas State A&M University. It's titled Transport Economist with three to five years of practical experience, a university degree in economics, English, some French, and you have to be no more than 35 years old. <laughs> it's an example of the type of people, the jobs in Luxembourg for the European Investment Bank. So this ad is from a consulting company out of Edinburgh, Scotland. And I was reading the specialist areas, and it read to me like it was the courses at West Texas State University. Agricultural policy analysis and information systems. I think some of our inductees were recognized as being experts in that field. Developing business support systems for farms. Internet institutional development in extension, training, and research. Transition of state enterprises and services to privatization. Developing sustainable farming systems. Management and marketing training. Animal health and veterinarian services. Solutions for post-harvest food systems. It's an ad for all of you. It's an ad for West Texas. Here's one for Mexico City, an economics program director for the International Maize and Wheat Improvement Center located in Mexico, supported by the Consultant Group on International Agricultural Research. We, my wife and I were just in Mexico City, and it's an exciting city. I recommend that particular job. So, the world is open to all of us, and each of us knows something that the world needs. I'm going to talk about how to try to get together and do that. Now, you don't have to quit the university and start driving a truck. You just have to realize that what you're doing, as you look for opportunities, can fit with something that you may want to do. How do you start? You define your own needs, desires, and dreams. Dr. Beiter told us some of his dreams. All of us have them. They can fit and they have to fit and will fit in an increasingly international world. I have some dreams. Someday, someday, I want Dr. Anwar to give a talk and not use the words cross-cultural and consumer convergence. <laughs> He'd have both of his hands tied behind his back on that. <laughs> and starting in, is think globally in everything you do. When NAFTA's passed, when you go to the supermarket, watch what's going on in that supermarket. I told this story to some of the marketing people here. I got stuck in 1992 for a couple days at the Holiday Inn in Beijing in China. All those big hotels sort of have a supermarket in it with products from all over the world. And on one shelf, they were selling distilled water from Oklahoma City. <laughs> Somebody was thinking globally uh, when they marketed distilled water from Oklahoma City in Beijing, China. The other is to define a course. Do a plan. Be ready to change it. But if you have that dream, fit it in and keep searching for it. And then, above all, learn to communicate. You're communicating here today. I challenge you to communicate to the leaders of the Panhandle of Texas about global issues, what's going on in your country, how you might be able to help them or you might be able, from the panhandle, to go and find out ideas that will be important back in the panhandle. Where do you get information? Everywhere. 
my wife and I gave a program at Amarillo College, and I co called uh, Allison Beachwood, a librarian at Amarillo College, said, we're giving this program tomorrow about going global <coughs> students at faculty at Amarillo College. Do you have anything for the library? I, she did a wonderful job. The next morning, she gave me, I brought about 25 copies today, a selected bibliography of material on international careers in the world. Especially the couples will just take one. I think there's enough from everyone. Just come up and get one after the class. I was even amazed reading the, the list of books that are available through the Texas Library System. The Panhandle International Forum, which owes a lot to many of the people here in the audience today, is moving ahead with a newsletter written by Cindy, with the leadership of the program, by Dr. Anwar. We've started something called the Triple Line, Individuals with International Information. And if we don't have your name on it, and you come from a particular area of the world that we don't have experts in, we want your name and your phone number, and all you have to do is agree if somebody calls you and asks questions about your country, be ready to, to answer those questions. And Cindy told me the other day that Texas officials in Austin, wasn't it right? Uh, yeah, are, are the interested in also. getting a copy of that list for their use. A way for you international students to develop relationships and for us here to be able to call if we want some information about Egypt or Taiwan. I always go to a travel agent for information. <laughs> they tell you some interesting stuff. And I also go to all the public libraries. It's amazing material. One of my little secrets is the State Department puts out a report on every country in the world. I know the Emerald Public Library, and I think they, they have it in a big binder comes out every year or two. One of the most comprehensive write-ups on every country in the world. I recommend it. Importance of language and customs. Both are critical when one works internationally. And you learn them one way or another. The best way is to listen. Recently, my wife and I were partying we were meeting people. We met this doctor, obviously, from somewhere in the Orient. And I said, I'm Paul, and this is Pan. And he said, Pan Paul. <laughs> and, I, and I said, yes, this is Pan, and I'm Paul. I didn't listen. His name was Pan Paul. <laughs> Anything we do anywhere, listen. <laughs> Custom. I learned the hard way, as many of you have. United Nations, we had a drilling consultant out to make the very best impression in Chile. He arrived for dinner at a Chilean home at precisely 9 p.m., the exact hour on the invitation. He was greeted at the door by the host in a bathrobe, smiling, unsmiling, and unshaven. He learned the wrong way, that the right hour to arrive is 10 p.m. or later. Doesn't, doesn't make sense. Well, it does in Santiago. <laughs> you arrive an hour later than you're invited. Business you have to learn, too. My wife and I were doing jungles of eastern Nicaragua, and to the door came a mosquito Indian man with this animal. I've never seen anything like it. I should have brought a picture of it. He was a tinker. If you've ever seen a tinker, it was about this high. Huh? He said, do you want to buy him? So we started the marketing business, of course. He was marketing his tinker. And I asked him, how big would it get? He said, it will get to be that big. He, lead, he needs to know something about the customs of foreigners coming to Nicaragua and what they want to buy. <laughs> now, you've got to get involved. 
This organization, as I see it, the name is getting involved. You're all getting involved, meeting and interchanging. You also have to expand your world. Dr. Duane Rosa was out on a trip in Western Amarillo and came to a little cross in the, in the roads. He was driving a pretty nice car. Huh? He got out there. There were a couple houses. And finally, he was out of gas. So finally, a young teenager out came out to sell him gas, and he kept him up in conversation. And he said, it must be something to live out here in the broad, open plains. The young man looked at him and said, I don't know. I've lived in town all day, all my life. <laughs> so we have to learn to reach beyond our worlds. It's only six houses, 80 miles west of Canyon. Then we need to get out and look at that clear blue sky. I have a good story about a young man we met in Mongolia in 1992. His name is Charles Kruskoff. He's from Midland, Texas, young graduate who came out to Mongolia. He was interested in Mongolia. So graduated from college with a little bit of graduate work. He just went to Mongolia. He knew somebody there, appeared at the American Embassy, and said, can I help you? Had some background in business and law and international relationship. And he said, well, we we can't pay you anything, but we have an apartment. We'll let you live here, and we need some investigation about business in Mongolia. That's where I met him. He wanted information about mining geology. He did that for the embassy, learned a lot about Mongolia, spent some time there. One of the few people with the embassy that went out in the wilderness of Mongolia. After that, he went to Beijing and enrolled in I think the School of Journalism, or Art, as a student. He said, that's a tough way to learn Chinese. <laughs> but he did. Then he came back to finish his graduate work at the University in Washington, D.C. And not having to work, he said, I don't want to work at McDonald's, I want to do something else. So he contacted the director of the Mongolian U.S. Business Council and said, I'll work for minimum wage and I'll be your gopher. Gopher. Stuff. And he did that. And the director is not as dedicated a director as the director of the Mongolian U.S. Business Council should be, so Charles is running huh, the U.S. Mongolian Business Council for the United States of America. And I was in Washington a few months ago, I called him on the phone. He graduated, should graduate this spring or this fall. He just had a call from the World Bank. This kid is what, 23, 24 years old. Would you consider being the Mongolian desk for the World Bank in Washington? We don't have anyone who knows anything about Mongolia, economics, and international trade. That's getting involved. It takes a little audacity, but the opportunities are open for all of us. Particularly opportunity growth areas. It has to be agricultural. This is one of the exciting growth areas. And, and sometimes we're a little apologetic about the panel of Texas, but here is where that knowledge is being developed. The world will come here for that knowledge, whether it be in growing things, in veterinary medicine, all aspects of it. Education. London Economist is a business magazine, and I'll bet you that 25% of those ads are related to education and opportunities in that. Areas similar to the Panhandle in Texas are all over the world. Mongolia is just a big panhandle of Texas. They need our ideas. Then how do you use your own talents? Stop and think what you can do. Don't be apologetic. <laughs> do like Charles did. Take off <laughs> and figure out where you can do that. No matter where you're from, 
do with the Peace Corps, the church, the research project. <coughs> Some practical tips and experiences. But a, a, I think a funny story first. Um, how many of you know what clip, clop, clop, bang means? That's a drive-by shooting in the Amish country. <laughs> now, a friend of mine thought it was a wonderful story. He was going to Pennsylvania, and he went to the Amish country and told them, but plop, plop, bang, it's a drive-by shooting. And they didn't laugh. <laughs> he wondered why. Because they didn't know what a drive-by shooting was. <laughs> Again, we have to listen. And when in trouble, look, listen, and think. My wife and I have been a couple of revolutions in the world. That's good advice. Huh? Look, listen, and think. I told the story of huh? Dr. Anwar's classes. And we ended up revolution in Honduras with machine gun bullets going through both windows. Well, actually through the front door. And and up on the third story, so we made a rope out of sheets. Huh? Tried to get out of the hotel, but immediately the site snipers saw the sheets. Huh? And he started shooting at us, so true heroes that we were, we crawled under the bed. <laughs> My Spanish wasn't very good at that time, but I said to Pan in perfect Spanish, Pan, I promised you adventure, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> Newspaper reporter got this, and it was all over the United States newspapers. And one of my secrets in the practical tips is fill out applications. Fill out applications. If you get an application to the World Bank, to the UN, to UNESCO, Educational Society, fill it out. Update it if you can, but fill it out and send it in. And do a lot of it. 29 cent stamps aren't that expensive. I filled one out for the United Nations. Eight years later, they were looking for a young geologist with corporate property experience you know, who could speak Spanish and was willing to be the low man on the totem pole on the UN project in Argentina because the Argentinians were anti-American. They said they were. So they want the, the lowest man on the payroll to be the American. You know. I was proud that they later asked for me to come back instead of the, all the rest of the, of the team. But in that application that had been sitting in the U.S., gave my name, my limited ability in Spanish, my expertise in corporate copper systems, and the fact that I was willing to work for a relatively low salary. So whatever it is, whether it's research or work or anything, don't be afraid to fill out applications. Look for them. Read the ads. I like the ones in the London Economist because even if they're not interested in me, I know friends of mine that might be able to do that. They call some of you when I see an ad with your name on it. <laughs> Another is to find needs to fill. Now, in my geologic magazine, one time there was an ad for a geophysical crew for the jungles of South America. The bottom of the ad, and said the previous crew had all been slaughtered by Indians in the jungle. That's not the kind of the need I think you should ordinarily look for. <laughs> but filling that need is it. Any need is important. And figuring out what it is. Increasingly, we live in a world without borders. That's what the Panhandle International Business Forum is trying to say to this area. We ask for your support, the programs, the seminars. Dr. Anwar has been very instrumental in doing that. Cindy is working on a newsletter that's, that's increasingly exciting. And, and it's just hammering home. You have no problem hammering home truth. Then you become a prophet. That's the best way to become a prophet. And, and when you say, increasingly we live in a world without borders. And this group here tonight proves that. That's true, and that is the future. 
no matter what your age, your situation, your background, there is a study, research, or work opportunity for you internationally. With the right motivation, plan, dream, adapt, and persist. I'm going to close with a story that's exciting to me because I've been involved in it. It was started by a phone call from a person in the audience here today, tonight, who had a friend who had just gotten a master's degree from Western University in engineering and was looking for a job and was frustrated because he couldn't get a job. And we got together and I gave him the list of all the companies that might hire engineers in the Panhandle of Texas, the contacts I had in Dallas and Houston. Took his resume and went to see them and no job. Came back here and said, wait a minute, and I think this is my clarion message tonight. Let's figure out how we can create an opportunity. And his native country was India. So we said, who in the Panhandle of Texas wants to do something in India? We picked a company, and he wrote a proposal to that company. He went to the economic section of the, of the Indian consulate in Houston, had done a lot of research himself, and wrote this proposal, and sort of described it, made an appointment with a significant panhandle company that's interested in international work. The first meeting, they were somewhat intrigued, but he didn't ask for a job that time. Huh. Learned a little bit about what their needs were. Huh. Said, I'll write you a more detailed proposal. They said, okay, do it. The second time he came back, they had pulled off. But it was nice they could do nothing else than read his proposal. He took it into them, met with them, and the vice president called the president in, and they read the proposal. Called a few more executives in, and said, come back tomorrow, or two days from now. He came back, there were six executives in the room. He said, well, come back on Friday. And on Friday, they gave him the contract for three months as a consultant to help solve part of the problems on this corporation in cracking India as a market for their services. And I think that's the important thing for the future. The world is not resumes for ordinary companies. They're ideas, capitalizing on what you know, finding a fit, putting together a proposal, whether it be research, study, or work, and make it go. In a world that increasingly will have to re reach out to everyone in this room, be it music, agriculture, information, to solve problems constantly and opportunities in a world that's changing and in my idealistic viewpoint improving every day. Thank you, Mr. Lyman. Your comments are always insightful to be enjoyed again tonight. Before we conclude, I would like to recognize some other members who are our contributing members because they have done an outstanding job in the last three, four years.